Everybody, welcome to the latest episode of the SCU Show. I'm your host, SCU, episode number 76. Back here with Mr. Brandon Estevez. Again, I want to thank him for running out his studio for us for the foreseeable future. It's going to be a uh, I have a, we have a great show today. Last week, by the way, thank you all for supporting the SCU Show on our return from a three-month hiatus. Over 1,000 hits on social media. Thank you guys very much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and shout out to TikTok. It's been big help for me getting these numbers up as well. Numbers don't matter, by the way. What matters is that you guys are listening. All right, so, ah, uh, jeez, I can't believe I have to do this. Let's start with the Dallas Cowboys. We're going we're gonna to start episode 76. Everybody and their mother, except me. Oh, no, the Cowboys lost. Oh, it's over. they got to turn the franchise around again. Draft a new quarterback. Fire Mike McCarthy. Fire Kellen Moore. Fire. Calm. What? What is, what is wrong with you people, honestly? First of all, calm down, okay? Relax. Yes, Dallas lost, and I, I, I know that's going to come. Everybody's going to make fun of the Cowboys because, oh, they lost. You know, everybody never talked about they're the joke of the league, you know. Have you seen the Texans? Do you see the Bears? Do you see Green Bay right now? The Cowboys are furthest from the joke in the league. The Cowboys are right where they should be. Yes, they lost by seven to a very, very, very talented defense. So what? What does it matter? They got a playoff win. That's more than half the league got. Probably more than half the league got. It's, it's something. It's a successful season. Everyone want to talk about the Cowboys failed. And everyone's making fun of them. And you fire everybody. For what? Why are we firing everybody for? For what? What's going on here? Mike McCarthy, uh, he led this team to a 12 win season. If it weren't for Jalen Hurts being Jalen Hurts, because he's been this way ever since the Alabama days, the Cowboys would have won the NFC East, not the Eagles. We'll get to the Eagles in later. Kellen Moore, that offense was number one in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage. Kellen Moore has been doing this for the last few seasons with the Cowboys. He's just been killing it there as the offense coordinator. I'm I hope he doesn't go anywhere. Not that I'm a Cowboys fan, but the Cowboys want to be successful. They're going to need Kellen Moore. And that defense. Don't get me started about that defense. You know how spectacular that defense is. If you watch football, you know that defense is absolutely spectacular. And that is all in credit to Dan Quinn, who, by the way, is also not going anywhere. So the Cowboys are exactly where they need to be. And we talked about this last week with the Lions. So they're not going to the playoffs. And they're not going to be as great as they were this year. The Cowboys are going to be just as great, if not better, next year. If you get another receiver, obviously you get rid of James Washington. He didn't do anything much anyway, and he got hurt. You got another guy to go with CeeDee Lamb. You keep Dalton Schultz. Hopefully he comes back. You keep the uh, coaching staff, first of all. And you have to, to go, for the love of God, you have to keep Dak Prescott. I know everyone wants to oh, draft another quarterback. That Dak Prescott, is a, he's, a, he's washed up. He's done. Really? He had a great season. Yes, he, oh, he led the league in picks. What are you talking about? He had a great season. You know who else led the league in picks? Matt Stafford. What did Matt remember last year? 20, 20 interceptions last year? Matt Stafford? Everybody loves him now because, you know, well, the Rams won the Super Bowl. I mean, look, Peyton Manning, 26, 2015 season, his final season. There's 17 interceptions, led the league. Super Bowl title. Went out with a Super Bowl ring. So these whole this whole pick thing, everybody, everybody needs to just relax. Like, I understand Dak threw 15 picks. Yeah, it's horrible. It's not good. He also has one star receiver in CeeDee Lamb. You give him another one, he's not going to throw 15 picks next year. He might not throw 10 picks next year. He's going to be much better than he was this year. The Cowboys are going to do much better than they are this year. And I could see them winning the NFC East. So I'm, I'm tired of hearing about everybody talking about the Cowboys are a dumpster fire, the joke of the league. Look at the Packers, look at the Bears, look at the Texans, look at all these other teams that are not the Cowboys, that did not make the playoffs, and tell me that the Cowboys need a change. They do not need a change anywhere on that team. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. You know, it's coming up on about four years now that I've rescinded my Cowboy fandom. I've been a Dallas Cowboys fan since 1994. So I was born in 94, so. And then about 2020, right before the pandemic hit the entire world, I rescinded my fandom because I knew I couldn't when I... I always talk about how this is my life. Radio, TV. That's what I want to do in my life. Doing play-by-play -play right now. Doing some other stuff. Doing... It's great. But this is what I want to do. And I don't want to be, you know, a Skip Bayless going on TV. How about... Belton Cowboys are getting mad or whatever about my team losing. Nick Nick Wright, Chiefs fan, talked about the Chiefs are so great. Jason McIntyre, the Jets are so great. Why don't we talk about the Jets? Everyone knows what the J-E-T-S stands for. Just end the season. And I have this thing now. I've been thinking about this. If you're going to be in the media, sports media like me or other people that I know, I won't say names, you just can't be a fan of a team. You put your emotions into it, and that's just not what we do in the media. You know that. You know we don't do that in the media, so... That's why I was sending my Cowboys fan, but I did have to come on here and talk about how everybody's being ridiculous about the Cowboys. They're going to be just fine. 
All right. Enough of that. All right, so let's get to our next topic. I'll, I wanted to start off with this, and then the Cowboys lost, so I had to start with that. Let's talk about the G-Men, what they did last week, they, 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 what they've done. I mean, you know, the, what the question is with the Giants now, what do they do with Daniel Jones? What do they do with Daniel Jones? Well, I'm here to tell you they have two options. Let's start with option number one. It's over. Done. you got to move on. And, and, you know, yeah, Daniel Jones just took the Giants to the playoff. What? No, first of all, no, he didn't. First of all, the Giants are finished. 3-6-1 and one in their last 10 games. 3-6-1. and one. Daniel Jones, how many 300-yard games did Daniel Jones have this season? I believe it was two. might have been three. Though, but two of them came against that Vikings defense, which is absolutely atrocious. And I was a fan of the Vikings. I thought the Vikings were going to the North. They did. And they have the opponents to Darius Smith from Green Bay. I thought, you know, Vikings are going to be so special this year. No. That defense was horrible. Justin Jefferson... And led them to the playoffs. I mean, credit to Kevin O'Connor what he's done with that offense. But it's all Justin Jefferson. Giants finished three six and one in a lot of ten games. And yes, they beat the Vikings. That's great. The Vikings defense is horrible, and they only won by like three points in that wild card game. But they did last week was the week after. They got trounced by the Eagles, thirty eight to seven. Trounced by the Eagles. Horrible game. I believe uh, Daniel Jones' pass rating was like fifty eight. Is that bad? It's not good. So everyone wants to talk about the, you know, that's, that's the first option. You can go on for Daniel Jones. He is not the answer. Uh, I have to give, again, give credit to Brian Dable. Brian Dable led the Giants to the playoffs this year. He, I don't know if he's the coach of the year. You go 3-6-1 and one in your last 10 regular season games. You're not really coach of the year. Saquon Barkley had a great year. He's back. You know, he's finally healthy. He's having a great year. Good for him. So there's that. You can move on to Daniel Jones. You know, find somebody else. Or you can go option number two. And of course, that would be franchise tag Daniel Jones. Why not? If you know if the Giants were so good this year, maybe it does have something to do with Daniel Jones. Maybe you can franchise him, franchise tag him, get some receivers in free agency or in the draft, and then see what happens. You know, one last gasp, one last chance for Daniel Jones in 2023 24. Is he the man? We're about to find out. That's what that's what the Giants owners should be telling themselves. So let's find out one more year. Franchise tag him one more year. If he has a great year, if we get him some guys and he does great, give him a give him a deal. I don't know about a five year deal. I mean, that would be absolutely ridiculous because at this point, I would never give Daniel Jones a five year deal. But if he does great next year, takes the Giants back to the postseason. I don't think it win the NFC East because the Cowboys and Eagles are better teams. But if Daniel Jones can take the Giants back to the playoffs and have much better numbers, because this year they're fifteen touchdowns, that's again terrible. But if he can do better than he did this year, then you have your guy. If not, and this is this is another part of it. You might as you might want to bring in a veteran. And there are a lot of veterans. We talked about this last week. A lot of veterans this year and this coming up this offseason. Lamar might be on his way out of Baltimore. Derek Carr is already on his way out of Vegas. Bucks players are saying Brady doesn't want to be back in Tampa next year. All right. So there you go. The Giants have options at quarterback for a backup, even a backup veteran. So Brady probably out of the picture. Bring in Derek Carr, bring in Lamar. I don't think Lamar's back up either. Derek Carr. Let's go to Derek Carr. He would be a great backup to Daniel Jones. And if Daniel Jones struggles, even after the Giants, you know, think they fixed it up, you got Derek Carr. There you go. You got to take on Barker. You got that defense that's done for well. You got Brian Dables, your head coach. So there you go. You got two options for the, for the Giants. You get rid of Daniel Jones. You start fresh at quarterback. Uh, maybe you get a veteran this year and then, like I said, draft the quarterback. Or you franchise tag him, see how it happens, see what happens, and still go for that veteran. Draft a quarterback. The qu- that quarterback you draft can learn from the veteran you bring in, which I think at this point could be Derek Carr. Would be a nice fit for the Giants. But right now, they do have options on what they want, what they could do with Daniel Jones. So again, if you want, if you want to let me know any of your thoughts, you know, I'm at, I'm on Twitter, Rain Fanatic Two. Head up the SCU show on Facebook. You know, we're always there. A lot of fans. I know. Shout out to my boy Tyler's Larkin out in Indiana doing his thing with Inside the Lions. I like what I see out there. So I'm give a little shout out. All right. So I see you show number seventy six. Uh, this has been a so first two topics for fire. I know I, I prepped these topics. I'm like, wow, this is gonna be a great show. I can't wait to come back in the studio and do this show again this week. Uh, it's a little snowy out here in Massachusetts, but we do we make do what we have. And uh, you know, spring is only a couple months away, and I can't wait. I love the warm weather. Now, let's get to some college ball. 
Didn't talk about this last week. I was supposed to. I probably should have talked about this last week. It just, I just never got to it. So Georgia won the national title. They, they destroyed. There's no other word for it. They destroyed TCU in the title game, sixty-two to seven. Kirk uh, Kirby Smart, back-to-back titles. So why, now the question is, why are we considering him the greatest coach? One of the greatest coaches in college football history. Well, I think I'm ready to do just that. He, I look. I saw this something. Someone shared this on Facebook a while back. And I thought it was very interesting. Everybody talks about Nick Saban, such a great coach, and he is. Obviously, he's won many national titles with Alabama. He's been in many other national titles, which they've lost. And they've also won many other bowl games, including the Sugar Bowl this year over Kansas State. Kirby Smart has a better winning record in his first, like, six, seven seasons than Nick Saban. Better winning percentage. He now also, like Nick Saban, has back-to-back titles. By the way, Georgia, back-to-back champions for the first time since Alabama. Nick Saban. 2011-2012. 2011-2012. So if we're talking with Kirby Smart, I would put him on a Mount Rushmore of of head coaches, college football head coaches. I would put Kirby Smart up there. I know people might think it's crazy because there are a lot of great head coaches in history. But right now, look at what Kirby's doing with this team with Georgia. His, uh, I believe he was, if he's a, I don't remember who, what position he played, but Trayvon Walker, Trayvon Walker he just went, went first overall in the draft last year to the Jaguars. Obviously, he's doing something well here in Georgia. Now, he has a, he's, there's rumors that he's going out and talking to the Colts about a head coaching job. If I'm Curry Smart, if, glass, if the vase is not broken, don't fix it. State Georgia, continue to win national championships because Nick Saban's only got maybe a couple years left. Kirby, Kirby Smart's got so many more years left than Nick Saban. So I think he should stay at Georgia. And I'll put, again, about that Mount Rushmore, I'll put Saban because it's Saban. He's on every, he's on a, Great everywhere. He won a national championship with LSU back in the day. Set many championships at Alabama. He was great at Michigan State. Miami Dolphins, we don't talk about that because he kind of butchered the whole Drew Brees thing, but it's another story for another time. Kirby Smart, got to put him up there as well. Along with, and I would put Joe Paterno up there, the late Joe Paterno, Penn State head coach. Again, many championships way back when. And obviously you got to go Bear Bryant because everyone talks about when they compare Nick Saban to a coach, they don't compare him to Kirby Smart. They're comparing him to Great Bear Bryant. So there's my four, my Mount Rushmore of college football head coaches. Nick Saban, Bear Bryant, Joe Paterno, and I'll put Kirby Smart up there. He has done an excellent job at Georgia. I hope he stays. And Georgia will be back in the college football playoff come next season because Kirby Smart is one of the best college football head coaches of all time. Oh, that was, so now, flip the script. I just, you know, basically kissed... Kirby Smart's ass, because he's so great, such a great head coach. Can't deny it. Now let's talk about his quarterback. Everybody loves Stetson Bennett, right? Stetson Bennett the fourth. He's such a ta- what a talented quarterback he is. You know, t- he won two championships with Georgia. He's led them to two championships. You know his offensive numbers are amazing. He's a great, such a great quarterback. Is he though? Is he really? I don't. I don't. Honestly, I do not think so. I don't see the hype with Stetson Bennett. The only thing I see, but a lot of people talk about how old he is. Because he's a 25-year-old quarterback in college. Normally, quarterbacks are like at least you know 21 when they enter the NFL draft. Some maybe 23, 25 entering the NFL draft. Um, yeah, that's a problem, a little bit, a little, little old. But that's not why I'm bad. I'm not, I'm not ripping Stetson Bennett. I just don't think he's going to be a talented NFL quarterback at all. I just don't see it. I don't understand the hype. Same with C.J. Stroud. Talk about C.J. Stroud. What makes these quarter? Why are people so fascinated with these two quarterbacks? Well, it's because they're first of all the coaches. We talk about Ryan Kirby Smart at Georgia, what he's done. He's going to continue to great even without Stetson Bennett. And then you talk about Ryan Day at Ohio State. I mean, look at all the quarterbacks Ohio State has had. They've been so successful with these quarterbacks over the years. That's why these Ohio State quarterbacks are so good. C.J. Stroud was a Heisman front runner this year. He's not. Good. I don't think he's a great NFL quarterback either. He was. A, he's a day one quarterback. Everybody has him going day one. Okay. Congratulations. Good luck to him, I guess. Stetson Bennett, though, um, yeah, that's a, that's a quarterback I'm just like so far off on. I don't, I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't think he's such a great quarterback like everybody else thinks he is. I don't understand the hype around him, and it's not to do with his age either. I just think he, I just don't think he's NFL ready. Everybody might think he could be a day two quarterback. He might go in the third, fourth, third. He might go in the third round, fourth round. Is he a day two quarterback? I don't even know if he is, honestly. He might be a 
day three quarterback. He might go in the fourth or fifth or even sixth round coming out of college. And I think the reason teams will say that is because of his age. It has nothing to do with his talent because obviously he had stellar seasons at Georgia. He has a great story, kind of like Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield. Great stories coming out of college, going to the NFL. But Setson Bennett, I don't see it. I've watched his games. I don't, you know, he's played great teams. He's beaten Bama. That's awesome. But look at his coach. Curry Smart is his head coach. And that's why I think he's been so well. And obviously, if there's a lot of teams that need a quarterback, maybe Tampa could be a spot for the— I think Tampa actually could be the only spot at this point where Stetson Bennett could succeed because obviously Brady might be on his way out. Kyle Trask talked about it last week. NFL bust at this point. So if Stetson Bennett's taken by the Bucks, that could be the only place he has success in the NFL. Other than that, I don't see him having any success, really, in the NFL at all. I know Georgia fans are going to be upset about that. I follow a Georgia fan. Used to work with her. Her name is Savannah on, tw- on Twitter. I know she's not, she might not like that. She might see that I'm pub- I post about Georgia football, you know, how I just praise Kirby Smart and then I'm ripping Stetson Bennett, but it's just the way it is, you know. Sometimes a good coach makes a good player, and that's just the way it is in football and other sports as well. All right, so uh, what what exciting games we had this weekend. The Cowboys lost to the 49ers. Talk about that already. How about the Bengals? I was I picked the Bengals to win. I was surprised, though, because they have, they have two offensive linemen who are out, including Alex Kappa, a huge part of the offensive line. He was out. I don't know if he's going to play next week either, but they went into Buffalo. They did not just win in Buffalo. They dominated in Buffalo, and I was very surprised because the Bills rushed defense. I mean, they had struggled against Miami, but this year they have had, they've had such a great, such a talented defense, especially with the run game. I was so surprised that they just fell off the rocker in this game. Now you got Stephon Diggs. You know, he's leaving the locker room before anybody else even leaves the field. It's like, Stephon, what are you doing? Did you not just have a great season in Buffalo? Have a great couple seasons in Buffalo? Yes, I understand. Third straight playoff exit. But you got to, I mean, you can't just be like, hey, you know, it might be the heat of the moment, but when it comes to that, just, I mean, it's the same thing happened in Minnesota with Stefan Diggs. It's crazy. Like, build a bridge, get over it, move on, get ready, get your body ready for next year. There's always next year. So I remember. When I covered my first ever championship game was the 2019 MIFL championship game between the Jersey Bearcats and the Steel City Stampede. The Stampede won the game in New Jersey. It was a great game. And I talked to head coach A.J. Rock after, and he told me, that's the great thing about sports. There's always next. You know, there's always, always next time. And I still have that in my t- spring 2019 Sportscaster Reel as my last clip. And you can go check that out on my YouTube page, by the way. Just saying. So anyway, get back to this here. So now we have the conference championship games. The Chiefs and the Bengals meet for the second consecutive season in Kansas City. Uh, this one is just so close to call. Obviously, last year, the Chiefs were up. It should have been a 20-3. They should have scored a touchdown at the end of the half to go up 28-3. They didn't. They wound up blowing the 21-3 lead anyway. And they wound up blowing the game. The Bengals went on to win the game. I believe the game went into overtime. And the Bengals went on to the Super Bowl. Well, now... Here we are again, Chiefs Bengals AFC Championship game, and it's just, again, it's just so close to call because both of these teams are just so talented. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes, we talked about it last week. He's my MVP. You know, he loses tra- Tyreek Hill, still throws for over five thousand yards. Still throws, still throws, leads the league with forty-one touchdown passes. Still the best quarterback on the planet. Well, now, I mean, you go up against Joe Burrow. We just saw what Joe Burrow did against the Bills with no offensive line, and they have a great defense. Chiefs have great defense as well. So it's going to be a question of can the Bengals overcome missing their offensive linemen once again? Another big game, AFC title game, looking to go back to the Super Bowl for the second consecutive season. But, and I know I'm here talking about you know, the advantage the Chiefs had. The Bengals don't have the advantage here. But unfortunately for those Chiefs fans, I don't think that the Chiefs secondary is good enough to stop Jamar Chase. T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and obviously at this point, Joe Burrow has got to be the second or third best quarterback in the post left of the postseason out of the four. I think the Bengals, they're going to do it again. Bengals, back to the Super Bowl. They're going to beat the Chiefs. It's going to be close. It is very close to call. It can go either way, but I'm picking the Bengals to advance to Super Bowl 57 down in Arizona. Now, 
go right to it. This one, too easy to pick. Too easy. The NFC Championship game is too easy. Uh, the, yes, the Niners, that's a great story. Brock Purdy, the last overall pick in the draft. You know, he's such a great story. Mr. Irrelevant has won his first seven games, including, he, he, by the way, he joins Joe Flacco and Mark Sanchez as the only rookie quarterbacks to win their first playoff games. Joe Flacco went to the Super Bowl his rookie year. No, the second year. And Mark Sanchez went to the AFC Championship game that year as well. So, who knows? You know, maybe Brock Curry can be the first rookie quarterback to lose to the Super Bowl, right? No. Not a chance in hell. And if you watched Monday Night Sports Talk last week, we did it on a Tuesday. Me, Tiffany Williams, of our News Talk New England's Facebook page, I said the Eagles were going to rip the Giants apart. I said 45-17. The Giants wound up losing 38-7. Eh, close enough. You know, I was right. The Eagles were going to trounce the Giants, and they did. Well, here we are again. Another uh, another team coming to Philly this time to go a chance to go to the Super Bowl. The Eagles will be the first time since 2018. Niners will be the first time since 2013. Well, oh, I, I was it's a nice run. It was a great run for Brock Purdy. Great run for the Eagle for these Niners. Excuse me. Great run. But the Eagles, and I'm using this expression very lightly. The Eagles are 